of the final item of business is a member's business debate on motion 7776 in the name of Richard Lockhead on unfair parcel delivery charges. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Would those members who wish to speak in the debate please press the request to speak buttons now and I call on Richard Lockhead to open the debate. Seven minutes please Mr Lockhead. Thank you Deputy Presiding Officer. And to the many members who have attended this evening's debate and of course signed my motion, the cross-party support for an issue affecting homes and businesses across our country is most welcome. I also want to begin by paying tribute to Drew Henry MP and to CAB Scotland Highland Council and to the many community campaigners like Rebecca Weimer, who runs Stax Bistro and John O'Groats, who started their own petition in July for highlighting this issue we're debating this evening previously. I should say to all of them and to the Chamber, I believe that December 2017 will go down as a turning point when, with household budgets already under pressure, the people of Scotland will say enough is enough, no more rip-off parcel delivery surcharges. And it will also be when the authorities hopefully accept that real action is now required to address this issue. More than ever, Scots will shop online this Christmas as better digital connectivity allows us to part with cash without ever having to leave our homes. For their part, retailers know that in today's marketplace, they need to sell online to compete. In rural areas in particular, the internet can be a godsend, especially for goods not available on their own doorsteps. Yet for a large part of the country, online shopping comes with a big, expensive drawback. Many households and businesses are ripped off by retailers charging jaw-dropping and completely unjustifiable sums for delivery. Remember, give way. Yes. <clears throat> Alistair Allen. The member uh, mentions jaw-dropping uh, examples. I'm sure he's about to give some. Will he, will he, concede, uh, will he um, agree that in uh, island communities that the situation is, is extreme? Uh, I think of a constituent in Harris who was charged... Excuse me a minute. Is your microphone on, Dr Allen? Ah, right. I think of a constituent in Harris who was charged £61 on top of the £145 uh, pounds price for a parcel... Uh, even when uh, the offer was made to pick the, the thing up for Inver from Inverness uh, herself. So um, I'm sure the member will agree that in the, the islands, all of our island communities, the situation is an extreme one. I'll give you extra time. That was a long intervention. Uh, thank you. And I absolutely agree with Alistair Allen and his constituency is indeed, of course, very much affected, as I'll refer to later on. Now, many ret retailers, retailers deliver free or at low cost elsewhere in the UK, but impose hefty surcharges to much of Scotland. A delivery fee of £50 was demanded for dispatching a £5.99 pair of hand towels to a space egg constituent of mine. A £60 surcharge was levied for sending a small £8.99 item to Fockerbers, a nozzle for a washer. And another Fockerbers constituent purchased spare car parts from Germany with free de delivery rather than pay up to £45 for delivery from elsewhere in the UK. So what started as a Murray campaign has also gone national. I've been contacted by people from throughout the country via fairdeliverycharges.scot and social media, and I've learned a lot. Referring to Alistair Allen, I can tell him I've been told a pair of boxer shorts, not ones I would wear personally, sold by a Lincolnshire-based IFL store, costing £19.91, can be delivered to Barra for an extra £33.94. But it's only an extra £19.15 pence to get it to Bulgaria, according to their website. So I think we can agree that example is completely bonkers. Now, there are many issues. Lack of transparency is an issue. Disgracefully, sometimes consumers are not told about the surcharges until after they have completed their purchase. A lady near Inveruri bought an exercise bike at £155, plus £15.99 for delivery, which she thought was reasonable. Next day, the company informed her there had been an additional £34 surcharge due to, due to her AB postcode. Now, CAB Scotland estimate up to 1 million Scots are affected. And it's important to be clear that not all retailers, of course, impose these surcharges and that others keep them very reasonable. But many don't. It's like a delivery tax costing much of Scotland millions of pounds a year. There is such an inconsistent picture. Some offer free delivery and some are all postcodes or minimal surcharges and others apply huge surcharges. There's no rhyme nor reason to how many of the surcharges are calculated. I've had cases where the surcharges for delivery to Elgin on the N86 with ID postcodes are higher than for nearby rural villages with AB postcodes. And I've had cases where the opposite is the case. The blunt use of postcodes is a big, big problem. I visited a community in Murray where the boundary is a field and the houses with ID postcodes are at one end and they are subjected to huge surcharges 
like £32.99 for a referee's whistle, a mini wallet costing £7.95, and the houses on the other side of the field would only get charged £4.95 delivery. To add to the absurdity, delivery lorries using the A96 drive past the houses with the higher surcharges. So no wonder the public are completely exasperated. And according to one courier company, Menzies, whose depot I visited and who delivered to all corners of the Highlands, many of the higher charges, like £74.99 surcharges for delivering a £61.99 kid's toy bought through Tesco Direct, are unjustifiable. I mean, no, we know it's not nearly as common for Scottish companies in the north to surcharge companies or as customers in the far south of England. Johnson's of Elgin Cashmere, for example, charge the same for delivery anywhere in the UK. Yet Groupon and Kiddicare and others have been criticised for refusing to even deliver to the north of Scotland at all. And there's often geographical ignorance and flawed computer software. Another lady told me she was asked for a £70 surcharge for an item advertised as free delivery. The reason for the surcharge was her AB postcode put on the Highlands. She explained she lives in Stonehaven next to the A90. That didn't wash. One man from mainlander Gale sent me his paperwork where the retailer applied a £7.99 surcharge because his home was deemed as offshore by the retailer. So as we all know, astonishingly, some mainland Scottish postcodes are not mainland UK according to many retailers. So the banners blazoned with boasting of free UK delivery are absolutely worthless once the customers get to the small print at the end of the ordering process, if there's even small print there. There have been attempts, of course, to tackle these rip-off surcharges. Ministers working with industry and consumer groups drew up a statement of principles for retailers to follow in 2014. Some retailers stick by them, others ignore them. Principles relating to location discrimination and transparency are being flouted by many retailers and courier companies. They're voluntary, they're only aimed at retailers, not couriers, and they're largely ignored. I recently met stakeholders in Parliament, and I'm delighted to learn today that the Minister now plans to hold, host a similar event himself. There is an appetite for more action because too many Scots have been treated as second-class customers. UK rather than Scottish ministers have legislative responsibility and it's time for them to investigate and regulate. After ruling out regulations in September, UK ministers this week seem to be softening their position. Ofcom only regulates the Royal Mail, the universal service provider. Regulating parcel deliveries, either through the Post Office Act or Consumer Protection, which is also a reserved issue, should be urgently considered. We must ensure transparency before orders are placed through better enforcement or better regulation. Many retailers seem to be acting illegally given the behaviours I've just outlined in the last few minutes. And if delivery is free to what's referred to as the UK mainland, then that must absolutely, obviously, include all of mainland Scotland. In the meantime, customers can shop around and name and shame the worst offenders. Big retailers like Halfords and Lloyd's Pharmacy have reviewed their charges after I contacted them, so they can change. So in conclusion, to end rip-off delivery charges, we need common standards all retailers and couriers must abide by. And I urge the Minister, whom I met recently to discuss this issue, to pick up the cudgels on behalf of customers and the people of Scotland, to take the case to the retailers and couriers, to lobby his UK counterparts, and to use the Scottish Parliament's new powers over consumer advocacy and advice to tackle this issue. So I ask both Scottish and UK Ministers to deliver up to one million Scots an early Christmas present by pledging to tackle these rip-off delivery surcharges. Thank you. Uh, open debate, uh, speeches of four minutes. I have 10 members wishing to speak. I call Gail Ross to be followed by Jamie Halker-Johnson. Ms Ross, please. Thank you, President Officer. And I would also like to thank uh, Richard Lockhead for bringing this debate to the Chamber. And I can imagine that this is one debate that will find consensus across all parties. We will all have stories about ridiculous delivery charges to various points, but in my case, my constituency um, of Caithness, Sutherland and Ross, but actually all over the Highlands, Murray, and in some cases even as far down as Perth. And there is some ambiguity as to where these charges are actually going. Are they going to the seller or are they being charged by the delivery companies themselves? The situation in the far north has become so frustrating that local WIC man Gary Gunn has actually set up his own delivery company to counter the excessive charges. He says that although he has only been in business for four weeks, he took a gamble leaving his job, but he has already been inundated with orders. He tells people on his Facebook page where he is heading on certain days, takes orders for certain companies, and looking at his feedback is already building up a happy and loyal customer base. 
Presiding officer, we all have stories about excessive, disproportionate and quite frankly ridiculous delivery charges to some postcodes. My own postcode of KW, which originates in Wick, is often mistaken as a postcode exclusive to Kirkwall. And whether this is genuine mistake or merely mischief making on behalf of the companies involved is hard to ascertain. But let me make it clear, according to that font of all knowledge, Wikipedia, but according to reliable sources as well, I must add, the KW postcode area or WIC postcode area is a group of postcode districts in the far north of Scotland. Although the area includes all of the Orkney Islands, it is named after WIC, the largest town in Caithness and the post town of KW1. Districts KW1 to KW14 are all on mainland Scotland, roughly corresponding to the boundaries of the historic county of Caithness. The area comprises the post towns of Berrydale, Brora, Dumbeath, Forsenard, Galsby, Halkirk, Helmsdale, Cambrace, Latheron, Leibster, Thurzo and Wick, as well as Kirkwall, Stromness and the rest of Orkney. I, along with probably everyone else here, have had loads of examples sent to me and if I had more than four minutes I could probably relay them all, but I won't. But here's some. Um, Gary told me, Euro car parts, delivery to GP mainland, GB mainland is free, delivery to Scottish Highlands and Islands, 595. He says that what particularly annoys him about this, aside from actually living on the mainland, is that they have a store located in Inverness and therefore should know better. James tells me, not exactly extortionate, but the Whiskey Exchange charge £5 surcharge for Highlands and Islands, which they classify with the Isle of Man, Isle of Scilly and Northern Ireland. Shona wrote to Kiddy Care, whom Richard Lockhead has already mentioned, you advertise that you do free delivery to UK mainland. I think what you mean is that you deliver to some parts of the UK mainland. Their reply, we currently only deliver to specific areas. We have no plans to change that. eBay, many of their sellers have the message, no delivery to the Scottish Highlands. And why are FlexiFlu charging more to deliver to the Highlands than they charge to deliver to the islands and to Ireland? Amazon, please educate your sellers. The Scottish Highlands is part of the UK mainland, and these are actually contravening trading standards. If something is offered as free to the UK mainland, then make it free to the UK mainland. So what is the solution? It's all very well telling people to shop around, but why should we have to? A possible solution being mooted is a network of distribution centres or pick-up points but this is almost impossible to implement if some companies won't deliver to the area in the first place. Name and shame, keep doing it. The campaign is gaining momentum and the more stories we get, the more we can bring it to the fore and report these companies to trading standards. Another suggestion, suggestion I was I pray we don't have time for another suggestion. These are all very good. Please sit down. I could call Jamie oh. Halker Johnson, followed by Kenneth Gibson. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer. Um, I congratulate Richard Lockhead on bringing this debate to the Chamber. Unfair delivery charges are a subject that members from across Northern Scotland will unfortunately be very familiar with. We've heard from a number of individuals or, uh, individual experiences already, and I'll no doubt hear more in the course of tonight's proceedings. Regret regrettably, these charges impact most on those who are often reliant on delivery services. In rural and remote areas, the alternative can often be long round trips to the nearest major town. In our island communities, accessing goods and services can often take longer and be even more complicated. But excessive charges can sometimes be in entirely incomprehensible. Towns like Elgin have experienced many issues, as well as the city of, Inver uh, city of Inverness. Constituents have been writing to me a great deal over recent weeks on this subject, and I would like to share some of their situations. In Orkney and Shetland, the main problem appears to be firms often refusing to deliver at all. My mailbag has been, has been a mix of both small firms and major global companies, and some even based here in Scotland. In the mainland, in the mainland highlands, examples tend to point more to charges and costs. In one case, we've had a gentleman faced with a delivery charge considerably greater than the value of the item he was having shipped. After some negotiation, he managed to get an agreement to have it shipped by Royal Mail at, at less than an eighth of the cost initially proposed. From Elgin, we've had an example of a delivery charge being inflated by over £50 compared to delivery to Inverness, almost in the realms where it would be cheaper to have a parcel chauffeur-driven for the remainder of the journey. Again in Elgin, there was a constituent who bought from a UK-based company which advertised itself as being able to post to the UK mainland. 
The offer was rejected, even though they were prepared to ship across the channel to continental Europe. These are just a handful of experiences out of many that, that take place all the time in my region. Not just amongst individuals, it's also an issue faced by businesses across the highlands and islands. The motion before us today makes reference to the cost of, uh, cost of delivering a mobility scooter to women in Keith. Again, this is one example, um, and represents a, but, but represents a wider problem where specialist medical equipment is now commonly delivered and people in the region can be excluded. There are things that people, so these are things that people in most of the UK will take for granted. I think all of us in this chamber will recognize that sometimes there are additional costs for deliveries to the Highlands Islands. In many cases, they are reasonable. However, in many cases, it is clear they're not. I'd also like to welcome, in particular, Citizen Vice Scotland's contribution ahead of tonight's debate, recognizing many of the problems, but also proposing some solutions. In many cases, it will be business that has to adapt, but I commend the interests of government too. The Minister Paul Wheelhouse has previously noted the UK Consumer Protection Partnership, chaired by the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy, is reviewing parcel delivery surcharging. There are certainly similar problems which arise in other parts of the UK, such as Northern Ireland. My colleague and MP for Murray, Douglas Ross, who has campaigned extensively on this issue, today raised it with the Prime Minister. He will be having further discussions with the Business Secretary, a recognition of how seriously these problems in my region are taken in Westminster. And I commend the Scottish Government for its interest in this area, which will be helpful in tackling this problem. For now, it is positive that members are keeping up the pressure on businesses that apply unfair delivery charges or whose actions, uh, uh, actions lead to delivery black spots. Individuals and businesses across the Highlands and Islands have suffered as a consequence. And where we, will, and where we see unfair delivery practice being applied, they must be challenged. I look forward to more business recogn businesses recognizing these problems and acting responsibly to address some of the many concerns we have heard here today. Thank you. I call Kenneth Gibson to be followed by Rhoda Grant. Mr. Gibson, Thank you, please. Presiding Officer. I congratulate Richard Lockhead on lodging his unfair parcel delivery charges motion and securing this afternoon's debate. He's taken a lot of work locally and nationally to gather support, gather support for this campaign, and I congratulate everyone involved. This issue affects many parts of Scotland, including my own constituency of Cunningham North. In fact, I first raised it in early 2012, my own motion entitled Time for a 21st Century Revamp of the Parcel Delivery Service, which highlighted the fact that rural and island areas are worst affected by our outdated and unjust delivery structures, with many customers facing higher surcharges and refusals to deliver by operators. Sadly, five years later, that situation still pertains for those living in urban areas, it is easy to take delivery services for granted, but as we've heard this afternoon, analysis from Citizen Device Scotland shows up to one million Scots will be affected by extra parcel delivery charges this Christmas. While some might be tempted by free delivery offers during this time of giving, more than 20% of Scots live in areas where parcel surcharges are applied. Ironically, it's those living in rural areas and our islands who are most likely to rely on online orders, given the shortage of shopping options and the distance from high streets. This often leads to the almost unbelievable scenario whereby it's cheaper for a customer living on Arran to have their parcel delivered to a collection point in Ardrossan and purchase a £7.80 return ferry ticket than have their parcel delivered to their home. The same could be true for my constituents living on Cumbria who pay £3.20 to travel and collect their parcel from Largs. Obviously, this situation is neither practical nor sustainable, especially for island and rural businesses that require frequent deliveries of for constituencies, constituents with limited mobility. Recently, one Aaron constituent faced a £10 delivery surcharge on a folding walking stick that cost just £12. While such items may be picked up in most high street pharmacies, for islanders being able to access these products online is a vital lifeline. In browsing the Marks and Spencers website, I noticed they proudly declare that they deliver to 30 countries around the world, including Australia and the USA, making it even more mystifying that they refuse to deliver large items to Aaron with no guidance as to how such items are classified. Since the postal service was fully liberalised in 2006, ending the Royal Mail's monopoly over the sector, the market has been flooded with firms offering low-cost delivery alternatives, sometimes at the expense of good service. As a universal service provider overseen by communications regulator Ofcom, Royal Mail must commit to at least one delivery of letters every Monday to Saturday to every address in the UK and offer postal services an affordable uniform tariff across the UK. Meanwhile, unlike Royal Mail, rival companies are allowed to operate unregulated. For customers, this can translate into surcharges and even refusal to deliver. This also means there is no ombudsman to arbitrate complaints, making it difficult to make consumer voices heard. 
But in the Scottish Parliament today, we must support our constituents, make their feelings known and challenge those companies on their discriminatory practices. There is a voluntary code which many companies subscribe to, but surely it is time to move beyond that. The postal redress service run by the Dispute Resolution Consultancy, CEDR, only accepts complaints against regulated member companies unless a non-member agrees to be bound by its decision. The alternative dispute resolution scheme for communications invites dissatisfied customers to refer unresolved issues with unregulated couriers and postal companies, but there's a problem. It can only deal with firms signed up to its scheme. Currently, none are named on its website, and it hasn't responded to my request for a list of members. Presiding officer, during my five years as convener of the cross-party group on postal services, we raised this issue time and again with the Westminster government. I sincerely hope this high-profile campaign is a wake-up call they need to tackle the persistent lack of understanding of Scotland's geography and infrastructure, which is punishing many of Scotland's communities, especially on our islands. I support colleagues in campaigning to resolve this issue and look forward to engaging with industry and public sector representatives to bring our parcel delivery services into the 21st century. Thank you very much, Mr Gibson. I call Rhoda Grant to be followed by Julian Martin. Ms Grant, please. Can I congratulate Richard Lockhead for securing the, this debate and also on his campaign highlighting the very unfair delivery charges we face in the Highlands and Islands. The rise of e-commerce has been a great benefit to the UK and especially for, to those of us living in the north of Scotland and the islands. When it's not uncommon to have to travel long distances to access shops and services. Being able to shop online from the comfort, comfort of our own homes has been a fantastic development. However, what's not fantastic is being ripped off for merely utilising the same opportunities that are open to all other consumers. Additional delivery charges are not just occasional, uh, an occasional nuisance, but a common and unjust burden placed on people in the Highlands and Islands. Evidence from citizen advice confirms that we pay more on average, and most of us have stories that we can tell from our own experience. For example, I recently bought some furniture online, and although the delivery cost was quite high, I really liked the item, so I went ahead. A couple of days later, I got an invoice for an additional delivery charge to the Highlands and Islands, which would have doubled the delivery cost. I immediately got in touch and asked them to cancel the whole order, they came back to me pretty quickly and waived the additional charge. The moral of the story is, don't accept it. At the very least, delivery costs should be clear and defensible. Personally, I have, I, I have a principle of just cancelling orders from companies who have inflated delivery surcharges. This time of the year, it's sometimes easier to buy presents online and have them posted straight to the person if you're not going to see them uh, before Christmas. On occasion, I've had a reasonable delivery cost to gifts going south, only to find that those going north can be totally over the top. When this happens, I cancel every item, north and south. They lose the whole order. Like many others, I often decide to go elsewhere. Practice has told me that if I shop online with small local companies, then they do not charge exorbitant prices. Shopping lo locally can support the Highlands and Islands economy and also get beautifully unique gifts to send to friends who live a distance away. Frankly, it's a win-win. While I agree with companies highlighting bad surcharge practice and naming and shaming those who charge them, for the most part, it has very little long-term impact. I think the reality is that companies who unfairly charge the Highlands and Islands customers feel that they have no need to court their business because it's not profitable. Often online shops contract out their delivery to other companies and for the most part that's based on the lowest contract price. These low prices are achieved by targeting places easy to deliver to and charging exorbitant prices to areas that are more challenging. To see a meaningful difference we need a universal rate for all deliveries. Companies can set their rates, but they must be universal to all customers. At the very least, online shops should be willing to send items by Royal Mail or Parcel Force when their preferred contractor um, exercises such discriminatory practices. Of course, the fear for delivery companies will be that by carrying higher costs, they will become less competitive than their rivals. This is a glaring example of market failure. We can't allow the market to operate unfairly. Discriminatory postal and delivery charges plainly show the requirement for public ownership. Until we're at a point where that's possible, 
I suggest that we need regulation for all delivery companies. Regulation would allow us to ensure that companies cannot undermine other businesses while, pro while protecting all Scottish areas from disadvantage. I appreciate the postage is not devolved, so we need to work with colleagues in Westminster to raise those issues there and campaign for fairness for all areas. But we should also explore how we can use the new powers of this Parliament to address the issue as well. Thank you very much. Before I call the next speaker, can I say, due to the number of members still wishing to speak in the debate, I'm minded to accept a motion under Rule 8.14.3 that the debate be expended by up to 30 minutes. And I invite Richard Lockhead to move that motion. Are we all agreed? We are agreed. I now call Gillian Martin to be followed by John Finney. Officer, I'd like to thank my colleague Richard Lockhead for bringing the issue of delivery charges before us in Parliament today. For too long, there have been huge disparities in the amount of constituents, including the area I re represent, Aberdeenshire East, that have had to pay. In a summer meeting with the chair of the Turriff Business Association, I was told that unfair delivery charges is their single biggest issue. This Aberdeenshire town is classed as Highlands and Islands by many companies who think that being in the Highlands and Islands is an excuse to charge more. Turriff is only 40 miles from Aberdeen. One business in the town told me that some of the UK companies expect a minimum spend of £250 for their advertised, in order to qualify for their advertised free delivery. Any less than that and the charges go through the roof. And even worse, some companies will refuse to deliver at all unless the minimum spend is at least £250. The UK-wide Consumer Protection Partnership has promised to tackle the retail side of the issue and I encourage more transparency from retailers and I welcome that. But the main issue, I think, is with carriers. In a meeting organised by Richard Lockhead with stakeholders last month, Royal Mail, who had obliged to have equal delivery charges, were present, but no other carriers were. Mm -hmm. And we're not just talking about the small couriers, we're talking about the large carriers, some of them who operate globally. They are silent on this because it is them who are not serving the whole of Scotland, or indeed the whole of the UK, in an equitable manner. So my challenge is this. When retailers award delivery contracts worth a tremendous amount of money, they must ensure that they will not disadvantage their customers by choosing a carrier who charges more for delivery to the north because the reputational damage won't be the unseen carriers, it will be the retailers. So it's time for them to be part of the solution here. How much more will a rural household spend on delivery at Christmas time compared to an urban one? It comes down to this, more money spent on delivery means less stocking fillers, and as any of Santa's helpers will tell you, that doesn't go down well. One family in Aberdeenshire told me, when ordering a basketball hoop, we were they were going to charge us about £60 to deliver to my address. But luckily I have family in Carlisle who were coming up the road, so I sent it there for about £10. And this is not just the first time that I've experienced overcharging, which I find ridiculous. One resident said that two online firms would not deliver to Aberdeenshire at all. But rural businesses are also affected severely all year round. North East Boiler Sales and Services Limited said that they had experienced higher delivery charges being in an AB53 postcode in Turriff, often being classed as Highlands and Islands, as I've said, and in some instances been described as not being on the mainland in Turriff, which is not even near the sea. The firm told me the majority of our goods are shipped from, up in England, from, from England and Wales and it's annoying that me and other businesses are penalised by higher charges. And we know that many people will go to retail companies in Europe rather than pay extra, so that's not exactly good for the UK economy. A speciality food shop that moved its premises from Aberdeen City to Turriff now finds itself classed as Highlands and Islands and paying extortionate charges for their very niche stock. And many local businesses also find that they're unable to get next day delivery at all, so they can't provide a speedy service for their customer orders. Chaffers Cafe and Turriff tell me that they constantly, they're constantly quoted a minimum of £15 plus carriage when free delivery has previously been stated by their um, uh, suppliers. I commend Richard Lockhead for bringing this issue to wider, wider public attention and we should all continue to call out unfair delivery costs wherever we see them. And I urge those in my constituency to report instances either directly to Mr Lockhead's campaign or to me directly, presiding officer. 
Thank you very much. I call John Finney to follow by Lee MacArthur. Mr Finney, please. Um, thank you, President Officer. I too congratulate Richard Lockhead um, for bringing this issue. As he, he rightly says, it's not a new issue, and I, I would go along with the, the, the credit that's due to Drew Henry and others for their work, but there's no doubt that uh, Richard Lockhead's displayed real tenacity in this. Now, paying delicate attention to a lot that's been said, and Mr Halker Johnson mentioned that the MP for Murray was raising the issue in the House today. Um, I did notice that Mr Lockhead had given us one example, the, the cost for relaying a referee's whistle to Murray, and I wonder if the two were not entirely unrelated. But what we do know is, of course, that there is a disproportionate impact on the Highlands and Islands, and there's lots of nice phrases about There's the phrase statement of principles, and we understand that competition law applies, uh, but also the, 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 the example given of extra costs and low volume. Um, it's called capitalism, this, in some respects. Uh, but, of course, the reality is, when we've heard from many of the examples, is that you can't vote with your feet. You can't go in to that alternative provider. Um, so when phrases like post-cold penalty, uh, the distance travelled, I think that, that's one of the reports that was, that was uh, um, eliminating. And, of course, we know that uh, partial force have a single tariff for the mainland. In Scotland, we know off come of no powers or limited powers. Um, but it's actually you no know, of someone in, in Mr Gibson's uh, constituency on the mainland who was making a telephone call uh, to a retailer who said they would be significantly surcharged because it was rural Scotland when they explained that they are uh, literally 15 miles from Glasgow. That changed, changed the tune. So I, I think um, I, I'm interested to see that there's going to be some collaboration. I think um, this has been an issue for long enough. Um, what we obviously need is, is transparency with issues. I was contacted by a constituent, and I know we'll all have these examples, and I never thought I'd be discussing fishing waders in the Scottish Parliament, but there you go. Um, and uh, he wanted to name and shame the Glasgow Angling Centre, now known as Fishing Megastore. Um, and um, it was a gentleman and his son. The gentleman lives indeed in Murray. He lives in, in Forest, and the son lives in York. And he gives me the mileage. And, of course, York's further from Glasgow than Forest. But the son gets them for free. And um, it seems quite a modest sum now, 9 .99 when, when, uh, But that was the cost of taking it to, uh, to Forrest. Um, and he, he, he describes himself, uh, and it's, it's correctly, he says, you know I'm a mild-natured, uh, mild but when a Scottish firm does it to its own people, I get a bit annoyed. So he describes as having a, a logical discussion with them a few years ago, but I might as well have been talking to the squirrels in the garden, is what he says. But well, I, I wrote to these squirrels in the garden, and I got a very, very peculiar reply. They, they said, I've received your letter regarding our delivery charges and find it a bit strange that an MSP would chase this up. He then asked for details. So I have chased it up, and I'm chasing it up with UPS now. But... Um, you know, there's, there's a role, clearly a role for the UK ministers here, and if there was a, um, a, a willingness to look at uh, the devolution of power and certainly support uh, my colleague Rhoda Grant in, in calling for that, I think the more powers we have here, then we can address uh, things like the rip-off that's self-evident in this. It, well done to Mr Gunn and Kate Ness. If I've caused to be transporting parcels in Kate Ness, I, it, it's Mr Gunn that I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll turn to. Um, I do recall um, living in rural Inverness a number as a child. Um, most of the buses had a section at the back that was grilled off. In fact, parcels came in the bus. That's what happened. It was prescriptions came in the bus that came in that. So we have to look at that. And, and of course, it's very difficult to get competing companies to cooperate. But there, there are environmental implications, particularly for this, if this perfectly that approach could be adopted for urban areas. So. Um, I, I think we need to keep talking, uh, uh, but I, I do commend um, uh, Mr Lockhead for his work, and I look forward to hearing the Minister's comments. Thank you. Thank you very much. I wonder if the squirrels felt like replying. Uh, call Liam MacArthur to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. Uh, thank you very much, Deputy President Officer. And like others, can I congratulate uh, Richard Lockhead, uh, not just on securing the debate, but for uh, his ongoing work, including the, the recent round table here in, in, in Parliament. It has, as others have said, been a generally consensual debate, although I did take exception to uh, Gail Ross planting a flag in the KW postcode and claiming it for WIC. Um, but we will move uh, on swiftly from that. Can I also, I think, pay tribute to Citizens Advice Scotland uh, for their uh, latest report, post-code penalty, and indeed for their ongoing work over uh, a number of years. Now, I remember lodging a similar uh, motion back in 2012, but I think uh, it's absolutely right that Parliament is returning to this issue and showing, uh, I, I think, a, a, a consensus across the, the parties that 
um, progress has not been uh, fast enough, uh, near far enough, uh, and that we are determined to continue uh, with uh, pressing for more action. The postcode penalty reveals, as others have said, as many as one million consumers in Scotland are asked to pay at least 30% more on average to have their parcels delivered than consumers elsewhere in, uh, in Britain. For those of us living in islands, as Alistair Allen rightly said, and for the, those I represent in Orkney, the figure is even higher at around uh, 50%, always assuming you can persuade them to deliver there uh, at all. We all know what the problems are. As others have said, they've been around uh, for years. We can all, um, as many have, um, cite egregious examples of eye-wateringly uh, exorbitant charges, often exceeding the value uh, of the product uh, ordered. Uh, only those in Barra who don't wear boxer shorts can be happy with the news relayed by Richard Lockhead in his, uh, in his speech. Uh, and cases where the existence of the islands as part of the wider UK uh, are flatly denied uh, by online and obstinate retailers. Uh, but where I think CAS deserves particular credit is in for setting out uh, some so potential solutions for this. Uh, a call for delivery firms to collaborate more effectively with each other and with the public sector. Uh, consideration of whether the existing post office network in the islands and islands uh, could have a role in reducing delivery costs uh, to consumers across uh, that region. Uh, and support for exploring the potential for pick up and drop off uh, networks in some areas. I do recall uh, when Parliament debated this issue, I think in 2015, that Derek Mackay, who was then the Transport Minister, and I know I've spent the afternoon trying to hold him to account, but here we go, uh, would be examining the possibility of creating uh, collection hubs at ferry terminals as a way of making delivery charges cheaper. And perhaps the Minister might be able to just update us on that in his uh, wind up uh, to this debate. Um, and while companies, I think, can be persuaded, not necessarily the, uh, the Society of Squirrels that um, Mr Finney has been engaged with, uh, they can be persuaded to look again at their charges and at their practices, or at the very least improving the transparency of the fees that they are charging, um, much more does need to be done. So I very much welcome uh, the unfair delivery charges uh, campaign, wish it well and offer it my support. Can I thank Richard Lockhead again for bringing this debate and for his wider efforts uh, on this important issue uh, for those in both our constituencies and well beyond. And on their behalf, I hope we will now see a stepping up of the collaborative effort, uh, collaborative effort called for by CAS, involving private and public sector with both the UK and Scottish governments and Ofcom playing their full part. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. I call Stuart Stevenson, who followed by Donald Cameron. Mr Stevenson, please. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you to Richard uh, Lockhead for uh, uh, bringing this debate to Parliament. Uh, in 1812, my great-great-great-grandfather, David Berry, who'd served in the uh, British Navy between 1780 and 1782, required a duplicate copy of his service record so he could claim uh, his uh, pension from the uh, Ministry of Defence or its predecessor. That letter cost him uh, £1.10 shillings to be delivered. When Roland Hill introduced the penny post in 1840, he transformed the whole nation, the whole island, by creating a uniform delivery charge of a single penny fundamentally different from what my great, 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 three greats grandfather uh, had to pay uh, for his letter. And interestingly, it saved money because it turned out that calculating how much it cost for individual letters, the cost of the calculation was exceeding the amount that they forego uh, in charges by higher rates. So, Uniform charges can have economic benefits in some circumstances. Uh, we just need to get computers out of the equation. Now, you would think that we are particularly disadvantaged in Scotland uh, by our delivery system. But the reality is, if you actually go out to Edinburgh Airport, you will discover one of the three airports in the United Kingdom uh, that is a huge, and I mean really huge, transport hub, together with Stansted and East Midlands Airport, that transports huge amounts around the UK every single night. And that's not terribly far away from Inverness, from Aberdeen, from my constituents, and from the constituents of many of us in this room. So the infrastructure is actually present. Now, it can be done slightly differently elsewhere. I have a particular kind of shoes uh, that I like for leisure wear, which come from Australia. Um, historically, I've ordered them from Australia. They arrive in 48 hours, and the charge for delivery, 
15 pounds. Um, and these are not expensive shoes, by the way. They're about 40 pounds. Uh, so we're not looking at other ways in which the company is making a profit. And if that company wants to deliver the shoes uh, to Great Barrier Island off the coast uh, of uh, North Island, New Zealand, the charge is £8.50. Now, Great Barrier Island is five miles further from Auckland uh, than Stornoway is from Ullapo. Just <coughs> compare and contrast. And that's shoes that are going from Australia to New Zealand. That's a three to four hour flight and then on to Great Barrier Island. So we know that it can be done differently elsewhere. Now, like everyone else, I've constituents who tell me about their problems. Uh, the Garden Centre website advertises free deliveries on orders over 50 pounds, except if you're in Aberdeenshire where it's 20 quid. Um, it apparently means only England and Wales. Um, Wayfair, free delivery within Great Britain, excluding extended areas. £25 uh, instead of free uh, for some of my constituents. So the kind of stories which I've heard from every member who contributes here in a cross-party uh, consensual way are the same. My wife, even, in an attempt to please me, has ordered gooseberry bushes and blackcurrant bushes for the garden for planting next year. An extra charge was levied. Her teeth are still grinding, presiding officer. It's time we did something about it, if only to stop my wife's teeth grinding. Thank you. Donald Cameron to be followed by Kate Forbes. Mr Cameron, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I too would like to start by commending Richard Lockhead for bringing this debate to the Parliament and for contributions from across the Chamber. Um, there can't be many debates that unite uh, Stuart Stevenson's great-grandfather, squirrels, fishing waders, and referee whistles. Um, but it is a clearly very important issue that has affected over one million people in Scotland. And I'm more than happy to have signed Richard Lockhead's motion and support um, his comments today. There can't, um, it cannot be stressed enough how people in the highlands and islands, and indeed other rural areas, should of course not be subject to exceedingly high surcharges based on where they live. It's fundamentally unjust and we should be doing all we can to protect those in rural areas from such high costs. The period 2012 to 2015 saw an increase of 17.6% in surcharges for Highland customers and a 15.8% increase for Island customers, excluding inflation. So the problem is getting worse and unless we see real change, those living in our most remote communities are only going to suffer more. In general terms, we need to dismantle barriers to communities in rural areas and reduce disadvantages to living in remoter regions of Scotland. And encouraging private consumer spending will drive economic growth and help reverse depopulation, which has become uh, very problematic in many parts of the Highlands and Islands, especially Argyll and Butte. And I too want to pay tribute to uh, Douglas Ross, the MP for Murray, for his efforts in raising uh, awareness of this issue in Westminster. He raised it in his maiden speech earlier this year. And to paraphrase that speech, he said that high delivery charges are disrespectful to the Highlands and Islands, inexcusable and plain wrong. And I know that in addition for pressing a, for a debate in the Commons, he has called on the Scottish Affairs Committee to hold an inquiry into the issue. And I hope that that committee does indeed hold a debate so the issue can be discussed on a cross-party basis in Westminster in the same vein that we are discussing it here today. And as Jamie Halcrow Johnson has mentioned, Douglas Ross raised this issue at Prime Minister's Questions today, taking the matter to the heart of the UK government, and the Prime Minister committed the Business Secretary, Secretary to meeting Douglas Ross to discuss the issue, and I'm sure this will be productive. Because it is incumbent on all of us to work together on this issue, as we have demonstrated uh, in the photo call earlier today and in this debate. Through our efforts here in Holyrood and the work of those in Westminster, we can jointly tackle the problem. In an increasingly digital world in which online purchases are becoming commonplace, it is inexcusable that some parts of our country fall behind and are discriminated against due to their geographical location. I know from my own mailbag that there have been some extraordinary examples of individuals and small businesses being hammered by these charges. One constituent from the Western Isles told me that when he tried to order some floor panelling from a company in England, they were seeking a delivery charge of just over £100. Another island constituent told me that he has to get his business parcels delivered initially to a smaller mainland courier who will then deliver the item on 
for a fraction of the cost that the larger couriers charge. He told me that plenty of people now make orders in this way. And I commend many of these great local couriers, such as Woody's, who are based in Stornoway, for offering realistic and fair delivery prices, particularly for smaller items. But it remains the fact that exorbitant charges imposed by mainland couriers are unacceptable. Remote areas of the Highlands and Islands rely heavily on imported goods, and we cannot expect our citizens to pay surcharges for products they cannot find in their local stores. So I trust that this debate will raise awareness of the struggle for those in rural areas of our country, and I call on both governments at Holyrood and Westminster to bring fairness to all, and I once again thank Richard Lockhead for bringing this debate to Parliament. Thank you. And I call Kate Forbes, the last speaker in the open debate. Ms Forbes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Presiding Officer, it's the 6th of December and I'm embracing the Christmas festivities insofar as I have eaten a single solitary Advent calendar chocolate. Christmas shopping for me is usually a five o'clock on Christmas Eve affair, by which point most of the shops have closed and I end up with an assortment of truly random things to bestow upon my predictably disappointed family. <laughs> But even for those who have put the tree up, cranked up the Michael Bublé, and are halfway through their Christmas shopping list, the season can have its gift purchasing disappointments, particularly for my constituents in the Highlands and Islands, when so many online retailers think it's acceptable to charge over the odds to deliver goods and gifts to the Highlands and Islands. In fact, not only do they charge more, sometimes more than the product cost itself, but they justify it by classifying the mainland highlands as overseas. And sometimes you don't even have the luxury of paying over the odds for delivery because the ret retailer just flatly refuses to deliver at all. Now, I go home to Dingwall from Edinburgh every week on the Thursday train, and I've never needed a passport yet. And those who know, um, um, well, though who knows what will pan out this week. I've never needed a boat either. In fact, I double-checked Google Maps to see if the fault line running through the Great Glen had widened, <laughs> casting us adrift into the North Sea. But again, despite Storm Caroline, there is nothing to report and we're still firmly, unalterably, irrefutably part of the British mainland. Despite that, Christmas shoppers living north of the Highland boundary line, which runs from Helensburgh to Stonehaven, and those in the islands will most undoubtedly face extra delivery charges over this festive period. And it's not enough that, just, that the mainland is just classified as not being the mainland. It's also that islands need to get a fair deal too. Every day, the Royal Mail delivers parcels up to 20 kilos for a flat fee to nearly every home in Scotland. Urban, rural, island or mainland, so there is no excuse. And it's time, as my colleague Gail Ross and many others have said, that we named and shamed these retailers who get away with it. Just last night, I was tweeted a map of the United Kingdom highlighting in green where Group On delivered and in red where they didn't. The red was classified as not being mainland Scotland and miracle of miracles, all of the Highland mainland was not classified as such. Now, just one story, because there have been many good stories that have been shared so far of a, a retailer in County Durham. Um, their standard deliveries, which would include delivering to Land's End, Land's End, which is 500 miles away, was six pounds. But to Fort William and the rest of the Highlands, which is 250 miles away, were three times that at 18 pounds. So that means it costs three times more to deliver something half the distance. And to add insult to injury, deliveries to Belgium, France, Germany, and Luxembourg were all still cheaper than delivering to the Highlands. I'd like to just finish by paying tribute to my colleague Drew Henry for his efforts to introduce the Consumer Protection Distance Delivery charges bill in the UK Parliament. If the bill had been passed by Parliament, it would have required distance sellers to provide purchasers with the lowest available delivery cost option, to introduce a quality mark for responsible retailers, and to penalise vendors who advertise free delivery but then impose charges or conditions. And it's time that both of all of us work together to do something along those lines. Thank you very much. I now call on Paul Wheelhouse to close the Government Minister. Up to seven minutes, please. 
Thank you, Presiding Officer. And uh, I want to start, uh, as others have done, by paying particular tribute to Richard Lockhead. Um, I congratulate Richard Lockhead not only on securing this important debate today, but I know he has worked tirelessly on behalf of his constituents, including on behalf of constituents of many members in this chamber. And I think we're all very grateful for the effort he has put in, not just uh, in recent times, but on many years previously as Minister as well. And he, I suppose just want to highlight this is a superb example to those outside this chamber of how an MSP in this place can make a real contribution uh, to tackling an issue that's of great public interest. So I want to congratulate Richard for that. I welcome all his efforts and indeed those of others who've been named today, and particularly Drew Henry, as, as uh, Kate Forbes just said. And we've even uh, Richard Lockhead has even managed to make it the front page of the Daily Mail last week, which is a remarkable achievement. Uh, and I also commend, uh, I do want to commend the Daily Mail, the Sunday Post and other newspapers for supporting Richard Lockhead's campaign. And given Richard, Mr Lockhead's own remarks, I'm sure he'll agree that although some progress has been made, much more has to be done to stamp out many of the unfair practices we've heard about today. Uh, but the Scottish Government is committed to continuing that progress, both to protect consumers and also to, the, uh, to support the businesses um, that uh, depend on um, uh, such uh, transactions and also do the right thing and treat customers well. But before looking at the role of the Scottish Government, let me first say that I appreciate the tremendous work in Scotland that many others are doing to improve the situation. Trading standards within Highland Council is leading the way in enforcing consumer protection laws around internet sales. Citizens Advice Scotland is also working, as we've heard, on delivery surcharging issues, especially in relation, in relation to parcel delivery operators. And indeed, the research that uh, CES has published yesterday is yet more evidence of the size of this problem. It makes clear the extent to which consumers from a wide area of the northern half of Scotland are seriously affected by substantial additional costs for delivery that are, quite frankly, totally unacceptable and deeply unfair. And it also shows that retailers are losing out in potential sales by imposing unfair charges. Uh, the report states that 83% of consumers are more likely to buy more goods online if they feel uh, there are no unfair surcharges being applied to, to postage. So it makes business sense to stop discriminating against customers purely based on where they live and to value customers who could uh, become repeat customers if fairly treated. Citizens Advice Scotland uh, will now use the evidence they have gathered to search for practical solutions and it's very welcome also that CES is working with partners to identify how cooperation can help reduce delivery costs and reduce inefficiency in delivering, uh, delivery of goods to those areas of Scotland affected. Now all the work that has been done on this issue by MSPs such as Richard Lockhead, Citizens of Advice Scotland and others shows many examples of unacceptable charges being imposed. Often there seems to be no logical explanation for the amounts demanded, and I'll refer to a few of those examples later. Uh, but Richard Lockhead himself has highlighted some frankly absurd practices, for example, being cheaper to get goods from Germany than England. It should not be a difficult concept to understand that Ellen and Elgin is on the mainland as well, and we've heard other examples today um, in uh, Turriff, uh, you know, to, for someone to conclude that Turriff is in, in the North Sea is quite, uh, quite crazy. I'm happy to write to companies where bad practice has been identified and to invite an explanation for such practice, and I would be grateful if members uh, across the chamber could either give me details of the companies they know about or feed them through uh, to, to Richard Lockhead uh, so that we're able to actually uh, tackle companies directly about their practices. Of course, I know that what we need is systemic change and long-term solutions. I want to reassure colleagues across the chamber that the Scottish Government is working hard to find these. Uh, my predecessor, Fergus Ewing, chaired parcel delivery summits in 2012 and 2013, which eventually led to a statement of principles uh, for retailers, which had been referred to. And I know that Richard Lockhead was involved in that as well at the time. We worked closely with representatives from retail, uh, couriers and consumer sectors. Uh, to achieve a positive change and share good practice. And these included efforts to ensure charges reflect actual delivery costs and to provide the widest possible delivery coverage. Now, I believe those principles have helped to raise awareness of the issue, supported good business practice and reduced the number of customers abandoning purchases that they would otherwise have made. However, while Scottish ministers can promote good practice, and certainly in response to Rudolf Grant, we certainly will um, use the powers we have around uh, consumer advice and information to, to do that, um, the regulation of prices for parcels is, of course, still reserved to Westminster. Um, I have got competing requests, but I'll take Mr Lockhead first, if I may. Richard Lockhead. Um, should I firstly add that uh, perhaps the Minister can add a press and journal in Northern Scott and STV and BBC to the list of outlets have been sympathetic to the campaign. But in terms of the UK ministers softening their position, has he noticed how in the last few days there have been comments from UK ministers who now may be more sympathetic to regulation? 
Minister. Indeed, and I, I, I give my apologies to those other media outlets for leaving them off the list. I'm um, certainly pleased that they have supported this campaign, and I have noted a, a, a change in tone, which I'll refer to later, if I may. Um, I think Mr MacArthur was wanting to make an intervention. Lee MacArthur. I'm very grateful to the Minister, and I also assure him that the Arcadian and Radio Orkney take a close interest in this issue as well. Uh, but before moving on to what I, he will legitimately say are responsibilities of, of, of UK ministers and, and, and UK regulators, uh, could he perhaps update us on the progress made in relation to the issue? I raised in, in my comments about uh, potential drop-off points at ferry terminals and the like. Minister, and uh, I suppose more people will be mentioning more newspapers in due course. <laughs> Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, certainly, uh, in relation to the points that Liam MacArthur has made, I will, I will come on to the, the matters around the UK Government. I certainly recognise the positive suggestion both in Citizen Advice Scotland's uh, report and indeed the one that was referred to by Mr MacArthur about looking for sensible opportunities to use central pick-up points uh, for goods and indeed that may be a solution, a wider issue that we face with uh, local high street retailers who are often open during the days when uh, resident population away commuting to work and then come back and then they're obviously closed. There could be a solution there uh, for, to tackle more than one problem, which I uh, certainly will be happy to pick up with uh, Mr Yousaf in the case of the ferry terminals. Um, but the UK government, um, uh, unfortunately, in terms of the uh, initially refused to adopt the statement of principles, but we were very pleased when ultimately they announced a change of heart and adopted them across the UK. And from a pragmatic perspective, we need to see more positive actions like that from Westminster because, of course, many internet retailers are based outside Scotland. Indeed, this issue doesn't just affect Scotland. An MP from Northern Ireland secured an adjournment debate at Westminster in September 2016, which led to the UK government producing a leaflet outlining retailers' responsibilities, and that again was welcome. Uh, we, the Scottish Government uh, welcomed that step at the time, but meaningful change will obviously only happen if the UK Government takes a far more active role in this. I am reassured that the UK Consumer Protection Partnership, which uh, was referred to by Mr Halko Johnston, is chaired by the UK Government's Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy, and it's reviewing the, uh, the evidence and parcel delivery surcharging and intends uh, coordinated action by partners to address any consumer detriment. That is welcome if meaningful action is a result. I firmly believe, and it's clear from Mr Lockett's own data, that examples of unfairness will emerge from this work, and I will seek to ensure that UK ministers deliver much-needed change in cases where charges discriminate against communities in Scotland. I was encouraged last week when the UK Digital Economy Minister, Matt Hancock, said the UK government would look into the matter, and we need to see that translate now into affirmative steps to address this unfairness. Uh, around a year ago, I wrote to Margot James, the UK Minister for Consumers, who I have a good relationship with, but to explain the continuing importance of the issue. And while no action was taken forward by UK ministers at the time, as they believed it should be left to the market at that point, I will be writing again after today's debate uh, to convey the concerns that have been expressed across the chamber and given the apparent movement indicated by Matt Han Hancock himself. And Richard Lockhead, uh, uh, Citizen Advice Scotland, other campaigners, and indeed the media can take much credit for this change of heart. Um, if I may very briefly, presiding officers, refer to a couple of comments that have been made by members um, in relation to the debate so far. We have um, had some really uh, useful contributions from our, across the chamber, and I believe that um, some of them have highlighted uh, specific examples that show and demonstrate the extreme unfairness that there is at local level. Uh, I would endorse uh, those points, but also remind members we'd be keen to get uh, practical examples that I can uh, take forward in subsequent discussions. And to that, I want to turn now. This debate, of course, is a welcome addition to discussions in improving the online shopping experience for all consumers. There's much going on, and the Scottish Government will, I promise, continue to play its part in helping to find solutions which are tailored to the circumstances of Scotland. A meeting hosted by the Scottish Government in August of key partners highlighted the value of collaborative working to find sustainable solutions. And following my meeting with Richard Lockhead to hear evidence he had gathered, I plan to host a roundtable to take that process forward. So let me be clear, there are no easy solutions to the long-standing problems we've been discussing today. Uh, but I believe that we can build on the progress already made. It will involve a range of initiatives and players, all with the aim of delivering the real change needed to eliminate the unfairness experienced by so many members, uh, constituents across Scotland. And I look forward to the support of members across the chamber in doing so. But I commend Richard Lockhead and all members here today for making very clear the impact on the local constituents. And uh, whether it's uh, you know, waders from Glasgow or whether it's um, uh, you know, shoes from Australia, there's been some great examples here of just how ridiculous the situation is and I hope we can work together to make sure that this is the last Christmas that customers in the north of Scotland face such prejudice in the online markets. Thank you very much. Thank you. That concludes the debate and I close this meeting.